We good. We live. We live. We're good. We're good and live. What's up, everybody? Welcome to day 609. I mean, episode 609. Making the game Songbringer. The game's been released, um, and now it's just in the phase where updates are being made. Little tiny things are being added. New items and stuff. One of these things is a new feature where if you die, these skeletons you leave behind, and these skeletons give you courage if you die again in the same room. Because lots of players have encountered these situations where they find a difficult room, they die, and they go straight right back to that same room and die again and again and again. And it's because, you know, you want to overcome the challenge. You get some place that kill, kicks your ass and you think, oh, I, can, I can still beat that. I can go back. There's got to be some reward there. There's so many reasons to go back to a room that you just died in. So rather than people getting super frustrated, that's what this is about. Giving players a helping hand when they die a lot. Salad dogs. What's up, man? Uh, it's been a, it's been crazy, really busy. Um, yeah, man. How about you? How's, um, how's this, uh, this, sem is it semester? How's this semester for you? So what I want to do is find this sound effect. Same old, same old. Weren't you, what class were you taking now that you were, you were telling me about the other day? Like, So I want to make a sound effect for the ghost, or I mean the courage sword. That's it, the game dev course. Yeah, how, how's that going? What are you guys, what are you guys doing right now with it? Oh, there it is. Okay, so I'm going to take this sound here and turn it into something for the Courage Shield. It's going well? Oh, yeah, easy, A. Eh? Oh, nice. Cool. Final project is a game. Sweet. Do you have any idea what you're going to make yet? Oh, okay. So you're using Java, huh? Oh, interesting. Moving into 3D. I think I've got this sound. In an Ableton document. For the shield. G shield, there it is. Okay, so here's the original sound. This is what I'm talking about. I want to take this original sound and turn this into something longer so it sounds really good when this skeleton gets released. Oh, hey, I might as well show what the hell I'm talking about, right? Let's get to a situation where we can... Um, first of all, we need a skeleton right away. Normally, you have to die and then... Actually, I'll just show it first, what the whole process of what it's like. Let's go to... Zero or two two four. This is a great place to die. <laughs> Come follow me to this great place to die. Oops, oops. Okay, so that's the place, but we need to turn off always screen cap because it makes a tiny window. Uh, sure. Yeah. I mean, it's, um, it's, 
it's not stellar, it's not awesome, but it's not bad, it's not a failure either, you know, it's, so it's like, you know, I, uh, I honestly, I guess I could say I, I was hoping for more, you know, I was hoping that I could kind of live my dreams per se, um, you know, and, but so it's, that's not going to happen this game, but like, at least it's a beginning, you know what I mean? It's better than, it's better than just an outright flop. Like my last game, it's actually, you know, it's, it's making enough. It's a decent start. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think what happened, I don't know. I'm not sure exactly what it is that's causing you know, it to not be as successful as I think it can be, right? I feel like this game has more potential that for sales than it's getting with its sales. So some ideas I have are like, you know, yeah, I mean, sales could definitely pick up and I probably, uh, there's a ton of people wishlisting it. So maybe that's a sign that like, maybe it's, maybe it's too expensive or yeah, and but also, and I think a big part of it is that it got these average reviews by the press because they played the basically the the version they got. You know, they they played a version that was just it wasn't as good as the Steam's release version, and then 1.01 on Steam was even better because it honed it. I, I took a look at what everybody said. And get you know all these criticisms that the press basically gave about Songbringer, and I took a look at what was most important and what was what was the thing that most people said. Um, you know the common the common complaint was that the combat felt really wonky and really imprecise and stuff like that. So I focused on that and already got that all fixed. It's version 1.01. I just adjusted like the hitboxes for the sword and and kept it way more consistent where you're swinging and things like that. Basically, it didn't it didn't really change the game that much. It just made it feel a tiny bit better. And I think that's what the press was kind of complaining about, you know, or not it's a good thing. It's a constructive criticism. You know, I just wish I just wish someone would have told me that before <laughs> before the press had taken a look, you know? Um it's like but, you know, it's like what you kind of need is what you really need is some people that are not that into your game to give you that kind of feedback. And they can't really tell you. They have to tell somebody else. So it's like it's hard to get that raw, honest feedback from players because, for example, people that back the Kickstarter, they're into it. You know, they're they're the kind of people that love Zelda games. They understand Zelda games. A person like that is going to come to Songbringer and like it. You know, they're going to like the way it feels. They're going to like a lot about it. And they're going to overlook certain things that uh, might, um, you know, might be issues to a kind of player that's not really that into Zelda games. So I, I almost wish there was like some kind of service where you could hire people that aren't that into your game but still play games and give you some raw, honest, like almost mean feedback. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Everybody that, and it's not just you, there's like a, everybody that, that's like even watched this stream probably is probably somewhat into a Zelda style game, you know, or at least understands it, you know, like, like the a big thing that's like, you know, like a player will do that's not that into a Zelda game or hasn't played a Zelda game before, they'll go to a room in Songbringer that's incredibly difficult. And because Songbringer is so permissive, it allows you to go anywhere. It also allows players to put themselves in these situations that are incredibly frustrating because it's too difficult for them at that point. And they don't understand the concept that in the Zelda kind of game, you're kind of meant to find those places and then back off. You're meant to let go. You're meant to go find something else, get more powerful, and then come back with your greater strength. So I guess in some ways Songbringer is kind of misunderstood and I really hope that um, I can smooth it out with the next updates. You know what I mean? Make it make it a tiny bit easier for those kinds of people that are running into these problems. Um, and and but without affecting the game at all, really. 
so for example, that's that's something I'm doing right now is these courage skeletons where if you die in a room that's not a boss room, it's not a boss switch room, we're talking about a regular room, you just die there, then the game drops a courage skeleton. And what the courage skeleton does is it gives you back some health um, if you die there again. So it'll, ca it'll cause people that were kind of getting frustrated with certain areas, it'll give them a little bit of a helping hand in that that moment but it's not too much of a helping hand and players that are already used to the game are probably not going to die that much anyways or they're going to come to those kind of incredibly difficult rooms and have some kind of you know good strategy for handling that so uh, hopefully that makes it better for for newer players or players that aren't really action rpg types you know but yet without without really changing the experience for anyone else either yeah. So I'll show it I'll show it up right now. Actually, let's um change to a slightly different window size. Right. It's a lot like a fairy in a bottle. It it kicks in when you die. So let's die in this room and I'll show you what I mean. Right, yeah, not as much like Zelda 1. But that just goes to show you um, the polish that they added to A Link to the Past was for good reason, you know? There's a lot of polishing elements in there, but I really feel like they, they lost a little bit of that charm that the original Zelda had. So I guess that's kind of the point of Songbringers, to kind of be have that that freedom, that wanderlust, um, and all that of the original Zelda, but with, with the polish of A Link to the Past. I forgot what I was doing. Oh, oh wait, the HUD. The HUD. Turn that to minimal for now. Okay, so we're gonna die here. Okay, so Rock's dead. He leaves behind a skeleton, so the next time you would come to this room, so he's just glowing skeleton thing in the middle. Let's say I'm battling these guys. I'm losing health fast because this viper dude is crazy hard. And I'm down to low health. Oh my god. Oh. Oh. See there. The, the courage skeleton kicks in when I hit zero health. And it gives you back three teeth. So it's kind of like a clutch thing. It allows you to see if we can barely. Yeah. See there. I barely made it through after that with that clutch health. So I think this is a good way of not, you know, not really changing the experience for anyone else, but still helping out people that were having trouble. Yeah, it was more directed. Yeah, that's so true. Yeah. Yeah, I hope it does. I hope it does. It, it feels right to me. And what I'm going to do is push it up to the Steam brand, the Steam beta branch and let people play it. You know, if anybody has any feedback, cool. If not, I'll publish it as 1.02 pretty soon. Yeah, I've been trying to do that. Let's, let's see what, what can be done to make it even better. Um... I do want to finish that audio first for it though. Cuz that will help as well to give you to make it noticeable. So what's happening already is that there's these teeth coming off of the skeleton and teeth coming off of you and then the skeleton's um aura comes off of you so it's you kind of get the feeling that it you know it is doing something to you. But it's it's still hard to notice in a battle. When there's lots of things going on, it's got to be even more obvious. And I think what could be done is just adding on some more additive layers of color, actually.
Okay, so this is a quick little bit of code that just adds the courage skeleton right away instead of having to die to get one to happen. That's a that's a good idea. I don't, have to I don't have to think about that. Like, how would I? How? What's? What systems would have to change? What systems could I use already to make that happen? I mean, it's already got the tick already can pause. I guess the HUD runs the whole time. You might be able. To, I might be able to just add a tick sleep actually to make that happen and then just refill the health independent of the tick hmm that probably would be the the best thing to do though to make it really obvious that it's happening i like that just add a little pause cuz right now it happens instantaneously which is like not that noticeable even no matter how good of a visual effect you add it's not going to be as noticeable as pausing the game sort of for a moment while that the, the health refills. Okay, let me start with the sound effect. That's easy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, let's call this um courage skeleton. Skeleton. Alright, there's the original sound for the Chi shield. How, how are these different? Forget how I made these slightly different, but oh well. I want this effect to be longer, more duration. Like that. Okay, I don't want it to loop over and over. Is looping. That's off. Oh, here it is. All right, this is looping 14 times. Let's loop that one time.
this has some tempo. Oh, that's what was different about those. The tempo was slightly different. All right, get rid of the vault, the tempo automation. So let's try and make this slow. What? Why is it exactly the same? Hmm, I'm trying to figure out how to slow this sound down. Well, simple way would just be to record it, I guess. Let's see what that sounds like. So I'm recording this sound and then just going to try slowing it down with Ableton's time engine, which is pretty good. It's actually probably one of the best time stretching pieces of software I've ever used actually. What? Hmm, wait, oh, it's working now. That was weird. Something like this, actually. All right, let's start adding some effects to it to make it clearer. Compressor would be good.
so I don't really want to add any reverb or filtery things because that'll get added at runtime. Kind of cool. That's pretty cool. Okay, I'm going to make this fade out a little sooner. Is done by about there. Yes, yeah, so that's already a ten second sound. It doesn't need to get any longer than that. Okay, I'll start there. Let's try this pause after this. Now I'm going to hook it up to the entity's data. And hear how it sounds. Keyboard wasn't working or something there. I feel like I'm in the Twilight Zone. All right, um, Courage Skeleton. We got a sound. Let's do. Let's try a tick sleep. And maybe he, yeah, heal over time. Let's do that. I wonder if it, if that'll work though. If I'm, if I'd use a tick sleep. Yeah, tick sleep won't, won't work. Um, I'll see if the sleep even works to start with. Um, it's going to be in like use skeleton courage in the health system.
not three seconds of sleeping. Oh, it might need four sleep. Still didn't do it. What the heck? Hmm. I might have some safeguards for how long it can max sleep timer. There it is. So I think I'm using this max sleep timer a little bit in the wrong way. There's a better way. If I do this max, oh. I remember, I think, why this was done. This was done to have this some kind of brute force style sleeping. Okay, it's without changing all those systems, I guess I can just do Just do it intermittently using maybe a callback on the hero's render component. Okay, so we can do this every, oh, this should be a function. I mean, a, a oh, 
a lambda. All right, now we got duration, interval, and count. No need for a delay. Now we've got everything set up. We can do basically the maximum tick delay each time. Oops. And we're going to heal the hero. I guess we could start off, well we want to do, well the, ha the player's health is going to zero. I guess we want, uh, yeah, it'd be nice if the player's health instantly went to half a tooth.
Okay, now in this function, we're going to heal the player. By half a tooth each time. Actually. Healing per is three point zero minus zero point five. We already did um, divided by count. Okay, let's see if that even works with uh, the, the pausing and hmm, it's weird that it Oh, I think it has a wake timer. No, I can't. The force chain or force sleep since the wake timer is zero. Oh, and then it, uh, I mean, what if we did that for the force sleep? So after it sets it, it's got a zero wake timer as well. What happened that time? Wow. 
What's up, Dumb Ross? I'm working on a, a new feature for Songbringer where you have these uh, courage skeletons that drop when you die and we give you back a little bit of health if you're in trouble. I guess I'll try logging it because that was really weird. I don't know why it what went wrong with this hit point math. Um, it's on, you could go to songbringer.com. It's got all the links to the, all the versions, the Steam version, the GOG version, Humble Bundle DRM free version, the Xbox version, and the PlayStation. All right, let's do that. So, so HP Delta before players current hit points and HP Delta after. Okay, so let's see if that happens again on the second time. But if it doesn't, that's okay. I'll just keep running it until I get that to happen again, and I'll get some log output, and I can figure out why the hell, why I did that. Still not sleeping right. It's like allowing the game time to do stuff in the middle there. I think it might be the wake timer. Thank you, appreciate it. Why isn't it doing that? Hmm, I guess I could try a, a shorter interval. The interval was 0 0.25, and the four sleep was 250. Maybe nice, man. Right, sleeping for health unit. That's what it's doing right now. Every time you heal it. Oh, you're talking about per actual, like a smaller amount, yeah. Uh, I hear you, man. I hear you. Okay, so this, that's what's happening here. I'm using a smaller interval. Because there's a, there's a system where basically it... It's not allowed to sleep too long because, of course, you're, it sleeps all the time. There's all these little sleeps happening whenever you, you know, you pull out your sword, hit an enemy and all that. It sleeps for 50 milliseconds. It gives you that feeling of connection. That's what makes the sword feel good, you know? It feels like you're connecting with enemies. But it can't sleep too long if there's a room full of enemies. Yeah, see, it's still doing it. Ah. There's got to be some kind of wake timer or something.
Okay, if I got rid of let's yeah. I'm I'm loath to change the way that systems work because that is a you're gonna you're guaranteed to have bugs. But let's see if this actually works. If I take away this max sleep timer, let's see if it actually can sleep indefinitely. that okay good I'm glad it's not that Is it the wake timer how does the wake timer even affect the sleep timer where is that Oh, the wake timer is only when you freaking sleep anyways. Uh. Hmm. Hmm. All right, maybe maybe if I force sleep for a whole three seconds now that the weight, the, there is no max. Should work. That didn't work at all. Man, having a slow day. My brain is slow today. Finally starting to get some sleep after releasing Songbringer. But my brain is slow these days. It seems like my body's trying to heal from all that. All that effort and stress of making this game the last few years. I am, yeah. Yeah. I'm like super slow coding. Can't figure anything out right now. Why is it's this is such a simple thing? The tick is like it's really just it's just math. Yeah. Right, so the wake, yeah, this is the only way the wake timer has any effect on the sleep is just when you call sleep. If the wake timer is still greater than zero, it's just like, nope. So for sleep gets around that.
Jeez, I don't know. I guess I'll just log it. Like everything else. <laughs> My tried and true debugging companion, the log statement. Sleep. Let's, let's get tick number and then sleep timer. And even the frame time. How about that? That's right. That's right. Okay. That should reveal what's going on. Frame time. Right, 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 right. Okay, what's happening? What's happening? Talk to me, log statement. Show me your secrets. Reveal yourself. It keeps dying sometimes too. Oh, that's great. That's the one thing I wanted to find anyway. The this, the this, sleep timer zero. Wait, what? Oh, that's why he's dying. Okay, HP deltas minus two. Hit points was two. So the HP delta would be zero. But we can't have zero because that causes the health system to think that it didn't do anything with its changing hit points. So. If HP delta equals zero, HP delta equals one. Now, what else? What else? So we, this is where it starts. We've got a pretty consistent frame timer of 60 or no, 30 frames a second, because we're streaming. Um, here it sleeps. 0.3 What? Oh, is that all? Did I just forget a zero? Hopefully I just forgot a zero. All right, I'll set a breakpoint here. And see if maybe the math is just wrong. Yeah, yeah, I got the math right. It's sleeping right. Three seconds.
The wave timer, however. Oh, the wave timer's alright too. Yeah, that can't be right. The wait the max wave timer. Oh, this is supposed to be min. Really? The wake timer was wrong this whole time? Oh my god. This is huge. Like, that's supposed to be min. I want to change everything, though. Re or, or I could just rename this to be min wake timer. And that would be more accurate. Named, at least. Okay, let's find out what happens here when it. Wake timer is zero, sleep timer is three, time scale is one. The next time it comes to here, let's see it do all this math. Sleep timer is still three. Stop. but it didn't oh I know it would I, I know it needs to be done okay I gotta scratch all this this is this is just horrible um, what I need to do is create a flux so just like the rest of the systems a flux can basically take control of the game's time completely but what's great about a flux is that it can continue animating the game while all enemies and everything can kind of be on pause. So what I need to do is create that flux, which basically just over three seconds, it heals the hero, but still allows the game to animate and everything, all the sound effects to play and all that kind of stuff. So I need to take a little break. And yeah, I'm, I am super fatigued. I got to get honest with myself and just... <laughs> rest a lot lately so um i'm gonna i'm gonna close down the stream but that, that's what i'm gonna do is basically create a flux and then there'll be a nice effect where it's pauses 
hero heals over time, and it's obvious that the skeleton has done something to help you out there. So, yeah. So that's all. That's all for this time, this episode. Yes, it is. I, I've learned this over the years. Thank you for reminding me. Yeah. Always, whenever you rest, you work better after the rest. Well, Salad Man, it was good chatting with you, dude. It's good catching up a little bit. I'll catch you next time. And to everybody watching this on YouTube or anywhere else, or anybody else here on Twitch, hope you all are having a good time. Enjoy yourselves. We'll see you next time.